Um, I'm Mrs. Thompson, and I'm here to introduce uh, Brian Wong, who is the middle child of the Wong family, who went to school with my children, Carter and Elise, when they were in school here back in the day, early 2000s to 2010 and 12. Uh, we have Brian joining us. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, Brian is a graduate student uh, working on his PhD. I guess is in two different areas, chemical and biomolecular engineering. He's researching ways to control the bacteria of the gut microbiome. And if you haven't heard about that for yourself personally, I'm sure he's going to tell you about it, but this is a topic, the topic that's been in um, the lay person's press for probably at least five, seven, maybe 10 years. And just today, the Today Show said to uh, email this morning and uh, talked about some things about microbiome. So people are becoming more, um, they're learning more and this is gonna help their health. So Brian is researching this at the PhD level. Hi, Brian, thank you for talking with us today in the advanced biology class here in the Knight STEM building. That was here when you were here, right? They built that. I think Elise told me it was in her like eighth grade year. 2012, maybe they opened it. It might have been one year after I left. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, it's a beautiful building and there's two labs here, which is cool. I don't know if you all get to do much experiments in the lab, but it is, they're both lab set up type classrooms. So welcome back and thank you so much for uh, talking with us today. I'll all turn right. it over to you. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Let me just get my screen shared. Oh. The host has disabled screen sharing. I think whoever has the computer needs to give me uh, access. You should be good now. Okay. Okay, is that showing up right? Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, well, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to let me talk to you and share a little bit of my uh, my story. So I did my lower school and middle school years at Holy Comforter and I managed to dig up some embarrassing pictures of those times. <laughs> and I graduated eighth grade, I would have been 2011, so 13 years ago. Uh, and when I finished Holy Comforter, I spent two years at Leon High School. Uh, and that's sort of where my journey kicked off. Um, somewhere in that time, I got really into the sport of competitive rock climbing, which is kind of unusual for a Floridian. Uh, but Essentially, I realized I wanted to pursue this as a sort of a profession or see what I could uh, do as a competitive climber. So when I was 16, I moved to Colorado to join a competitive climbing team. Uh, and this was a big, uh, big step in my life and it was pretty challenging, but uh, it also was really exciting and it let me sort of travel around the world and I got to compete for Team USA and uh, go to all these crazy locations and I even got to climb some cliffs out in China and uh, did some climbing in Africa. Uh, and I had some great experiences from pursuing this dream, but along the way I realized I didn't want to be a professional athlete anymore. And I, I realized I needed to get my uh, education settled. And I've always been pretty, uh, pretty committed to my studies. So uh, when I was in Colorado, I started uh, college at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, and I studied chemical and biological engineering. Uh, and after four years, I got my undergraduate degree and I realized I still had more to learn and I actually really wanted to do research. And the best way to do that is to go to graduate school. So after four years in Colorado, I wound up closer to home and here now I'm in Atlanta, Georgia at the Georgia Institute of Technology and I'm studying chemical and biomolecular engineering is essentially the same field. Uh, uh, but for those of you that don't know, what is chemical engineering? Uh, it's sort of a broad term that uh, this uh, engineering discipline 
sort of encompasses uh, aspects from many different fields of science. I think the most important uh, for my research is, uh, is biology and chemistry. I think what engineering or how engineering is different from say maybe biochemistry is engineers typically want to apply principles from different sciences uh, to solve some problem or maybe create some new technology that they can apply uh, in a particular situation. So one example could be uh, tissue engineering or uh, in this photo, you can see some 3D printed uh, structures that are actually going to be implanted in someone as a bone scaffold. So uh, engineers develop the materials and the processes for making uh, these 3D uh, tissues. And then another example could be for uh, carbon capture. So uh, as you all are probably pretty aware of now, there's a growing climate crisis and chemical engineers are some of the leaders uh, who are developing the materials to capture this carbon dioxide uh, and recycle it back into the ground. So there's a wide array of uh, applications that chemical engineers are focusing on. So as Ms. Thompson mentioned, I am studying the gut microbiome. So I don't know how many of you uh, have taken uh, advanced biology yet, but the human body has about 30 trillion cells. Uh, these make up all of our tissues and muscles and whatnot. We actually have about the same number of microorganisms living inside of our gut, which is pretty astonishing because 30 trillion is a really big number. So what's really interesting is that these microorganisms, uh, we call this our microbiome, they're essential to our health. If we didn't have them, we couldn't live. Uh, so these microbes are really instrumental in keeping our brain functioning. Uh, they help develop our immune system and uh, keep us from getting infections. Uh, and they even do a little bit of our digestion for us. So some of the energy that we get from our food, uh, we only get because our microbes help us eat it. So the microbiome is extremely important and it's related to many different uh, uh, health and disease states in humans. So we're really interested in studying what are the bacteria inside of us, what are they doing, and how can we change what they're doing? So that's where my research comes in. We're really focused on this idea of uh, reprogramming these bacteria. So if you think about it, any cell, if it's a human cell, if it's a plant cell, or if it's a bacterial cell, they're really just little molecular factories. And what I mean by that is uh, these cells are just making proteins or chemicals. And the way they do that is based on what genes they have. So genes, I'm sure you are pretty aware, genes are encoded in our DNA and all living things have DNA. So if we wanna reprogram these bacteria, we can either take away some genes or we can give them new genes, uh, but we can control what they do, uh, hopefully so we can make them do something uh, useful for us. So now we have these engineered bacteria and you can kind of think of it as uh, programming a computer or have little circuits inside of them. Um, People have applied these in all these interesting ways, such as uh, to treat cancer, uh, to uh, essentially control how they talk to one another, or even to uh, treat viruses or other diseases by releasing uh, certain chemicals. And even further, there's some crazy applications. So some of these bacteria can actually be uh, safe to inject in you, so you can use them uh, sort of as an imaging system, uh, such as MRI, and we can get really uh, useful pictures of our body or we can load them up with certain drugs and essentially take them as sort of a, a living pill, which might sound a little gross, but uh, it's similar to uh, taking your probiotic in the morning, like eating your yogurt. So as, uh, as we learn more about the microbiome as a, as a field in uh, all these different scientific studies, uh, we're, in, we're connecting it to all sorts of different disorders and diseases. Uh, and essentially what we're thinking is, if we can engineer our microbiome and uh, pick which uh, bacteria we have and which ones we don't have and sort of control their behaviors, that we can use this engineering as a medicine. And if we can uh, control these microbes uh, with uh, really good uh, detail and specificity, then we can essentially uh, link them to treating, say, different uh, heart diseases or inflammatory diseases or even things like cancer. So I figured I would leave it with a 
few lessons that I've learned over the years before the questions. And I think the first thing I learned is uh, to not be afraid of doing something different. And I think it's pretty obvious I had an unusual um, uh, teenage experience uh, moving out at 16 uh, to pursue a sport. I don't think most people did that, but that was definitely an important part of my, my journey. Uh, and I would say I've learned to try lots of things. I think taking all the classes and trying all the sports or you know picking up all the hobbies you can will really help you decide uh, what you love to do in life. I think it's really important to stay curious uh, and ask questions because uh, as you can see, I've been in school for many, many years and I'm still learning. So I think it's important to, to always be learning and to strive for uh, lifelong learning principles. Uh, so that's all I have. And I'm happy to answer any questions about my, my sports or my, my school or anything in between. I have a question. <laughs> um, I um, over here can't see me, but uh, so once you modify these genes for the bacteria, there still is the chance for mutation, correct? It's possible. Yeah, I think it depends on uh, maybe how complicated the gene is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, there's then from there there might not be intended results that you expect, or there might be complications from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely possible. So, you know, I didn't really talk about the details, but um, one of the ways that we can sort of prevent that is by having sort of a, we can create sort of a containment, um, biocontainment circuits. So if the cell is not doing what we want, we can essentially uh, turn it off and um, get rid of the gene so it goes back to its original self, for instance. Would you, um, so in turning that off, do you turn it off from exterior, from interior with, um, how, how is it turned off? Yeah, so there's a, so yeah, the, the way that the cells can sort of sense their environment is really interesting. And essentially, um, they can sense, you know, different temperature changes. They can sense uh, if certain chemicals are around. So what we tend to do with our, our genetic circuits, our programs, is we sort of hook them up to ways that we can maybe add a really, uh, add a small chemical like a sugar, um, like a, a specific sugar that can turn on or off our genes of interest. So we can apply something externally, yeah, and uh, change the behavior of the cells. Ellen, what's your question? Oh, I was gonna say, how do you tell the modified microbes to do something? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so for the most part, if, if you want to make a specific protein in a cell, you know, most, uh, I think humans have about 20,000 genes. So we're making, you know, over 20,000 proteins. Bacteria are a little simpler. They only have about maybe 2000 genes, but there's a lot of proteins they're making and say, we want them to make some new protein. Well, we just give them, uh, we insert a gene that we want in their DNA. And then usually we need to also supply uh, sort of a control system so we can turn on or off that gene. So this is what we call a genetic circuit. Um, and that's, uh, it gets a little more complicated, but you know, essentially we create these circuits of, of gene expression. Mm -hmm. So Brian, what do you wanna do when you are finished with your degree? What is your goal? Yeah. Um, so my plan, I, am, I should finish my PhD in the next few months. So then I will be a, I'll be a doctor of science. And then I have committed to going uh, to do uh, further research at Harvard Med School. So I'll go there for a few years to do more, uh, a little bit different research. And then my long-term goal is to apply for professor jobs. So essentially to be a university professor. Brian, whose lab are you working in and Har in Harvard and what is that area of study, the microbiome, but is it even more specific than that? Yeah, his, so I'm joining uh, a researcher, uh, Seth Rakoff Nahum, and what they're really interested in is the connection between the microbiome and 
allergy. So that's sort of a, an un, undiscovered field of how do the microorganisms and inside of us sort of uh, mediate or I guess you know make better or worse the uh, you know food allergy, which is a really uh, critical problem as uh, the rate of food allergy is increasing pretty rapidly in the in the westernized world. So it'll be some of the same I've done uh, in my PhD, but then we'll focus on a different different topic. So you said you played for Team USA. Does that mean you played like in the Olympics? Did you play in the Olympics at all? Like so seven. when I was uh, competing, the the climbing had not made it to the Olympics yet. Um, so I competed for the junior climbing team and uh, competed in world championships and stuff like that. But I think the Olympics started 2020 for climbing. So I had uh, switched over to being a researcher by that point. Do you still climb? Yep, yep. I still climb. Uh, uh, it's my main sport still, but uh, more for my own development and, you know, not for the competitions. What were your top two peaks that you were on? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, a good question. Uh, I think the picture I showed of China was one of my, my favorite trips. That was uh, uh, climbing the, the arch at a place called Moon Hill. Uh, that was definitely pretty cool. And then I would say my favorite climbing has been in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. It's a really beautiful place if anyone gets the chance to visit. Um, how come you got to climb in China? Oh, I, I actually went to China twice. Once was uh, for the World Championships. And then once was, uh, I was sponsored by a company and they uh, flew me out there for a sort of a, a team building trip. Um, is rock climbing all about uh, calisthenics or anything else? What was the second thing? He said uh, all about calisthenics or anything else. Like um, Oh, uh, I, yeah, I'd say there's, a uh, good amount of calisthenics. I, it's similar in, I think, uh, some of the skills you need are similar to gymnastics, maybe. Um, but it's a really technique-heavy sport. So it's not always about being the strongest or being the tallest or something. Sometimes it's all about the, the skill and the technique. And upper body strength, I'd imagine. Yeah, there is some, some uh, like strength still. involved. <laughs> yeah. Were you doing uh with the grommets, right? And the the pulley system. What is the that, oh, that the um uh yeah, there's multiple disciplines. My main ones were the bouldering, which is uh oh. no ropes, and then the walls are maybe ten to fifteen feet, or the sport climbing, uh, which is the tall walls, like fifty, sixty feet, uh, and you're attached to the the rope the whole time. So those are two of the Olympic disciplines now. Frank, can you talk about a time where you had, whether it was in climbing or your education, where you had a setback that was difficult to overcome and then how you persevered? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely with climbing, you know, I... I think I was unlucky in some ways by getting, I had some unfortunate injuries. Um, and that's always, that'll always hurt your, your career. Um, but I, I found, I think, you know, sometimes what you think is a setback might actually uh, be a good thing, sort of a blessing in disguise. Um, and I remember sometimes I maybe had an injury and then I, didn't do so well at a competition because I wasn't ready for it. But then over time, it taught me how to maybe learn some new skills to adapt. And then um, in the long run, I was actually better off. Um, so that's maybe something from climbing. And, you know, I think for uh, academics and school, you know, I think one of the main challenges is 
you know, you know, you're going to apply to multiple colleges or graduate schools or jobs in life. And, you know, you're really not going to, most people don't get everything they apply for. Um, I think it's, it's sort of a, it's a good practice to take the best thing you, you do get and just make the most of it. Uh, and I don't, I think you shouldn't be limited by sort of uh, the choices that you end up getting. Mm -hmm. Um, so you said you graduated at 16 um, from Leon, correct? Well, I did two years at Leon, so I did my... Left school. Uh, you left Leon and then went to and then Colorado. Finished high school yeah. there. Right, I thought right. you graduated and then no. finished. I was, so I was going to ask about that process for these children. Mm -hmm. So what was it like to, to switch schools and move out so early? Well, I, I was initially thinking you finished high school at 16. Oh, so no. How that process happened. Um, but the next question then: you, Did your family move with you to Colorado? You moved mm. on your own. So yeah, I my family stayed in Florida, and then I moved on my own. And we we had made some friends that we knew in uh, in Colorado, and they were just they were uh, happy to host me, sort of as an exchange student. Uh, so I was able to stay with, uh, I think, two or three different families during my high school time. And, you know, I was a high schooler, but I was also sort of a professional athlete at the same time. And um, yeah, I definitely couldn't have done it without the support of, of my, my family and friends, for sure. Uh, Brian, do you mind sharing some memories of Holy Comforter that you think these students might share with you through your times here? Oh, man. Ones that maybe they won't share, but... Uh some of your uh, favorite Holy Comforter memories. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely remember the the field trips. I think uh, going to DC, and that's eighth grade, I think, right? They're going in about two weeks, two and a half oh, weeks. Yeah. yeah, that's exciting. Um, I remember, do we still do Brain Bowl? No, we, we do not do Brain Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I remember there were some, some clubs we did. Um, Oh yeah, what else? The Smokies is usually one that Smokies, yeah. You guys didn't get to remember that. Yeah, well, my or St. Augustine. Yeah, these guys, these guys were a COVID year, so they missed oh. their Oh. They missed Smokies oh, yeah, and St. Augustine. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. Um, DC is DC is Make the most deal. of your DC trip. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Three. <laughs> Do you still stay in touch, Brian, with any uh, Holy Comforter? Uh, any Holy Comforter friends? Do you still stay in touch with? Yeah, anyone? yeah. Actually, it's funny. I when I was in uh, college in Colorado, one of my middle school friends from Holy Comforter ended up moving there, and we were in the same program, and we took classes together. Um, Who is that, Brian? Uh, that was Nicholas Nicholas Stankis. Mm -hmm. okay. That's great. So we graduated together, actually. <laughs> um, so it's a small world, you know. I I still hear from from some friends who are still in maybe medical school or you know that now they have jobs and we're growing up. But I you know I still hear from from some holy comforter people. And then um, you didn't introduce your, I didn't introduce you, but Mrs. Bowen is the um, advanced biology or advanced science teacher or science teacher. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't okay. know all of your So notes. I teach eighth grade, um, all of eighth grade, life science okay. and biology, okay. and then half of the sixth grade are science. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So how many of the students in here knew of the word microbiome? Yeah, probably probably a couple, but we yeah. we haven't got to bacteria and viruses and things like that yet. Yeah. We're, we've yeah. just got unfinished with um, DNA replication. Um, oh. We've through cell cycle, um, those kinds of things. Brian, do you want to uh, talk about just a little bit for them to like bring it home, so to speak, as far as um, the you know foods that we're saying now are better for your health and how that affects the microbiome? You want to talk about that at all, or? Yeah, I could say a few things. On I think the um, general level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it's funny because you know we learn a lot of, um, or we know we we investigate these questions 
uh, at you know such a small detail, all the way down to like what are the molecules in these foods, um, and that's part of what I'm going to research in my next position. Um, but it's funny because I think some of the things you already know are are true. You should eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, you shouldn't eat a lot of you know fried foods and really fatty foods, and uh, it's some of the intuitive things uh, probably that your parents tell you that are healthy are true. Um, and what we are learning is that, you know, some people respond to different foods because of the microbiome that they have, because yours is different from uh, your friend and uh, no one's is the same. So um, I would say, listen to the, the, the old, you know, you know, the classic things that you've been told that are healthy. That's probably the best. And whole foods, uh, you want to explain the difference between a whole food and then if it's sort of frozen or in a can. So when you say vegetables, there's kind of also yeah, yeah. range of vegetables in a way. So, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think the, the research on if you freeze food, I don't think you lose too much nutrients. Uh, but I think the, the fresher the food is probably the better. Um, and I think, sure, whole food versus processed food, you know, getting some instant macaroni and cheese might have a lot of extra things in it that keep it uh, safe on the shelf, you know. So maybe those are not so good for you. Uh, but if you cook the, you know, get some noodles yourself and, you know, make make the, the sauce uh, the day of, that's probably better than the, the pre-made stuff. Um, so, you know, fresh ingredients, yeah, whole foods. Um, you know, things that are less processed in the factory is usually better. Do you want to touch on plant-based? Mm. You know, yeah, that's, uh, diet. So I, I'm actually vegetarian. So, um, you know, I think that's actually an increasing trend. More people are are eating less meat. I think, you know, there's there are a lot of connections with eating too much red meat that can be sort of bad for your heart health. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things is just moderation is always good. So you never want to eat or drink too much of, you know, one type of food or uh, one type of thing. Um, but I, yeah, I think you can't go wrong if you <laughs> eat a lot of vegetables um, and don't fry too many foods. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask one quick question? I know we're probably running short yes. time. Yeah. So uh, we've got a lot of really great athletes here um, mm -hmm. at Holy Potter and a lot of good athletes in the class. Um, and I wonder how you balance um, athletics at your level with education at the same time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I would say that was maybe one of the, the biggest challenges. Uh, I was always like, I was very dedicated to my classes. So uh, I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I wouldn't tolerate if I, you know, got two Bs or something. So I was always going for straight A's. Uh, so I think, uh, I, you know, I think surrounding myself with sort of like-minded people, um, having uh, friends in school that were supportive of, or that pushed me to keep working hard in school was, was very helpful. Um, and then... I think it taught me really how to have good time management. So, you know, there's only so much time in the day and you have to figure out the best way to use it. And uh, I think I, I just learned how to use my time really efficiently and uh, didn't waste my time uh, goofing off <laughs> sometimes, but most of the time not. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you all so very much for um, participating in this with Brian and Brian, thank you so much for sharing thank with you, us. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, thank it was, you. It was nice to meet you all. So great to have you. And I think I may have a picture from middle school brain bowl that you mentioned. Maybe Carter was on that with you. So I'll have to look and see what I can find and I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, I think we won one year. I think you did. I think you even had an article in the newspaper, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll do a little research and send it to you. you know, I was always, class. you know, doing a lot of uh, school things. That's great. And then you also got to enjoy the beautiful outdoors by doing your rock climbing. So that's oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. best it, it of both worlds. That's great. Time. <laughs> that's great. Great to see you. And thank you again so very much for joining us Good for luck, this. Brian.
Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank Have you. Good day, luck. Everyone. Thanks.